Shida Barakasala Barabatama. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I keep in com communication with my pastor friend Morris in Myanmar each <coughs> week on WhatsApp. Like, what's up? And kids went back to school, <laughs> but then <laughs> the government sent everybody back home for quarantine a couple more weeks. Oh, boy. Church is still closed, but he gets to visit house to house, encourage the people. <coughs> and also, uh, as we gave some 500 the last month, he bought for five families bags of rice, oil, and he showed me the picture. He still get like 28 kids and his orphan complex, always believing for more. So you guys <coughs> always planting good seed. Before I came in, Pastor Holulu, hey, give me the envelope from the church. So you guys are always planting seed <coughs> that'll go further from here via Western Union from Safeway. <laughs> and that night, he showed me the picture. Oh, I got it, brother Ty. All right, look at all this <laughs> money, you know, making a difference. <coughs> Hallelujah. Thank you very much, Lord. <coughs> Touch your hearts. Bless and return that which you have sown, good seed, and I'll open in prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for the opportunity to humbly come before you, Lord. Let your utterance speak through this lips. May you, see, you receive all praise, honor, and glory this night. And your word <coughs> will empower your people in days to come. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> windows of heaven open I was thinking about Banaya and I was thinking hey I wonder if I should bring my new passport <coughs> that I got and it's empty you know no no stamps or anything just new picture and stuff like that you know and I thinking yeah you know as you save your money you can go to Israel <laughs> see all the sights and then continue on in that round the road trip by Thailand, Japan, and then Maui, you know, while you guys young, you guys can travel and go, you guys can go, you know, because in missions, <coughs> sometimes, or just not even so-called missions, but just to travel, you can <coughs> launch out, backpack, and just see countries, go around, you know, things like that, and Sometimes when you leave this airspace, you make the decision that, Lord, I surrender all, you know. Even if I die, you'll be with me no matter what. I give it all, you know. And then you go, you go through the hardships and everything, <coughs> believing 100% God will help you out, and you make it back, you know. And it's like, whoa, God is faithful this year and next year and next year. <coughs> so sometimes when things come now, it's like, huh. I've already been giving my life to the Lord, facing death all these other years. So what's the little, <laughs> little C, you know? Yeah. So I just want to open <coughs> in this scripture that I've been kind of like looking at, thinking on. And the title of this message is Wondrous Things. Okay. Wondrous okay. Things. Psalm 119, verse 18. Psalm 119, verse 18. Psalm 119, verse 18. You can all read it out loud. One, two, three. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Open thou mine eyes, O Lord, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Wondrous things out of thy word. He'll show us through his word, Genesis to Revelation, and also things, people experiencing words that the pastor preached. And as we listen to our spirit, <coughs> God helps us reveal, shows things to us. Ooh. 
we're to focus our attention on the supernatural, miraculous things of God. Amen. Jesus, the focal point of our heavenly relationship. Amen. Jesus, our sure foundation. Amen. So, tonight I want to talk a little bit about habitation, as Pastor Bobby always mentions, and in tonight's praise and worship, touching on habitation, our place, communion with Jesus, things in heaven. <coughs> also, I, you know, on Daystar and others, it's supernatural TV program and different things, or <coughs> others that we have heard and seen who have gone to heaven. God revealing, opening to his body things about heaven, heaven's glory, <coughs> and the changes people receive when they come back from heaven. And then to give us a foundation on on Genesis to Revelation, when the people go to heaven, Jesus will always mention to them, have you seen this in, in my word? Do you remember this in my word? And People will always refer to the things of the word, although the now they can see it and realize it or have to go back to earth and bring up the scriptures to just see what's already available to us. So it takes faith on your part to believe and live out this word just by simple faith and trusting God. And so <coughs> when we dig the foundation very deep, you'll come back to the great things that Jesus did for us in our salvation. Amen. And it's those things, then maybe we're on the mission field, hey, we meet a Laos group coming over the border, teaching and sharing with them, then we give them the basic redemptive truths and the blood of Jesus, his sacrifice like that, so then they get in the hard times and without the glitter and the glamour or being able to see Jesus face to face in heaven, that they have the foundation that they can go on. You did this for me, yes. Lord, you sacrificed it. You was beaten and bruised in the spirit and in the natural by the Roman soldiers, but you still pressed on. And then that word will keep you going, keep you going, keep you going strong. And then you realize, too, you have that foundation that nobody can shake. Then when these other things <coughs> from the world, when the world is influenced by Satan and all his schemes, and you be begin to see his blueprint and how he's using people, it's like, ha, 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 I see what their schemes are. I'm not moved by them. I stay grounded to the word and I won't yield my mind and thinking to that area but how much more now the glories of heaven pouring out to my life this evening the storehouses of heaven have been opened Shh. my children believe in your heart believe for what you need you know just your secret prayer, Lord, okay, we need this. We need an upgrade. We need this to do this. We need this help. Storehouses are open, but it takes faith. Amen. You believing and you getting the vision. And before you get the physical evidence of certain houses or vehicles and everything, you need the title deed. You need the registration <coughs> in your heart. And then when you get that, in seed form in your heart it's like yeah that's what I'm believing for that's what I got every day every morning I see that thank you Lord I, I, I got this porch I got this refrigerator I got these different things that I need your very best is there for me that's what I'm believing for I got the deed way down in here now it's like now you begin speaking it every day ha 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 devil you're a liar it's mine things are opening up things are happening uh, things moving <coughs> then your words become creative power 
Mark 11, 22 says, Have the faith of God. Other translations says, The God kind of faith. The same faith that spoke things into existence, you got it. You can create. Amen. You got power and begin speaking. And like God, sometimes you, you say and say, let there be out of nothing and light comes. Hallelujah. And the different things create. Amen. Let your house, your property, your land, let it come forth. Other things you mix, like ingredients, you bring the soil, the dust of the earth, you create man, make something in your business industry something you're bringing materials together to create to prosper and, and bring things together and God will lead you and prosper you so inside of you he's given you all spiritual blessings that you need in life and so all the shouting and the distractions and the newscasters and everything and stuff and then when they say yeah yeah you, we gotta do census and we got to do all oh, math and everything. It's like, oh, come on, you know. <laughs> you know that you know from the days of old, you know. It's just a lie and, and deception of the enemy. But just to bring you back to some foundation scriptures, and it may be a, a little, bit, little bit long, but I'll try to get it through as much as, I can and read it quickly <coughs> just to give you the foundation. This will be in Psalm 22 12. We'll get it. First time I ever put a mint <coughs> in my mouth. For my show, for my show. And then I realizing <laughs> how hard it is to <laughs> speak. <laughs> and I'm thinking I might spit it on the ground or something. <laughs> Wow, it's different. <laughs> Psalm 22. Psalm 22, 12. It says, Many bulls have compassed me. Strong bulls of Bashan have beset me around. Many bulls have compassed Jesus at the cross and going to hell <coughs> verse 13 to 16 they and then this is David a psalm of David and so thinking hundreds of years before David has a vision he's, he's going through situations chased by Saul and everything and pens a psalm and the psalm is exactly like Jesus on the cross and his suffering and, and the greatest hardships. And this is verse 13. They gaped upon me with their mouth as rav ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a pot shirt and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws and thou hast brought me into the dust of death. The dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hand and my feet. They pierce his hand and his feet. The dogs, the dogs uh, surrounding Jesus as Jesus is going down, down, down into the depths for three days and three nights. They thought they had Jesus. Arr, ah. We got Jesus, we got her, we defeated him, <coughs> and everything. But then, in the next few verses, we'll see what God has done. But he's going there, righteous and holy, for our sins. So we can carry on in days to come, and realizing, man, thank you, Jesus, I worship you, what you have done. Your precious blood, I didn't have to suffer. Isaiah 52. Isaiah 52, verse 13 and 14. It says, Behold, my servant <coughs> shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. As many were astonished 
at thee, his visage was marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. His visage, his body, his face was so marred more than any man. People couldn't recognize him, all the thrashing and beating and sufferings that he took and going to hell. But let me jump a little bit ahead that this one guy named Kevin Z Zadai, Z-A-D-A-I, he was mentioning when he went to heaven, he saw Jesus like a bronze, gold, dark color, blonde hair. But he never didn't see all the scars and the beating and uh, everything. He had nice face and everything. And he said he didn't look at the feet. But in heaven, Jesus was just beautiful, radiant, without all his visage marred and everything. Isaiah 53, 1 through 12. I'll just read beginning with verse 3. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of, us, of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we were healed. Amen. Here, back in Isaiah 2, hundreds of years before Jesus shed his blood on Calvary, he already penned the word, we were healed. Amen. Past tense. That's right. Whew, today, by faith, we receive in it walking in it, Amen. standing on the ground in it, knowing thank you Jesus, you was marred, you was bruised 39 stripes not going over the 40 representing all the sicknesses and disease that mankind can face he bore it all Amen. he took the sicknesses and pains bore the anguish all we, like sheep, have gone astray. We turn everyone to his own way. The Lord has laid on him the in iniquity of us all. Verse 11. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he has poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sins of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Took our iniquities, what we should have faced, our punishment. You know, you, whatever, maybe in the natural, some of the su strongest pain or anguish or cut or broken something that you had, oh, they was beating him, whipping him. He took it all for us, shed his blood, and then he's going to prove something more as he's risen and seated at the right hand, and then he's going to provide for mankind a position a place of authority the authority of the believer he's going to reveal to a, through Paul the x-ray vision of the power and authority we have holy Colossians chapter 2 9 come into, into the New Testament Ha, 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 ha. Ho, 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 ho. Your spirit can rejoice. <coughs> no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Hoo-wee. And then even, <coughs> if you were to go to Jesus and see him face to face 
and he will remind you. Or Paul will be teaching you like this Kevin saw or Jesse Duplantis saw Paul in heaven teaching a small group of people. And then Paul looked at Jesse and said, Hey, you read my books? And Jesse like, Yeah, Paul, I read and preach from your books all the time. You know? And he also saw Abraham, Father Abraham, barrel chested, big old guy. Hey, Jesse. <laughs> and minister to Jesse like that. So he said, Yeah, and Jesse Duplantis, <coughs> he in back in eighty eight, he, he was saying, Yeah, and Jesus was a preaching up there and he was strong. And he, he told me, Jesse, you tell my people I am coming soon. And it's like, whoop, wow, wow, yes, sir, yes, sir. <laughs> Strong to him. And just things that affect <coughs> a person's life and future. That, yes, you know, it's nice to get a vision and go to heaven and see some things, but... I heard Brother Hagen said, don't ask for this spiritual you know, visions and things like that because if God gives it to you, okay, fine. But if it doesn't, don't worry because the enemy might accommodate things and show you some things like that and get you off and certain things like that. So just be open, be hungry, worship Jesus. If he wants to, for you to see, he can see. But if you can learn and glean from others, take the good from that and continue on because again Jesus will always come back to his word reveal his word encourage his people show, show them his word Colossians Colossians chapter 2 verse 9 through 15 it says for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily and you are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power in whom also you are circumcised, the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who has raised him from the dead. <coughs> and you, being dead in your sins and uncircumcision of your flesh, has he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them, triumphing over them in it. Jesus stripped off the authority of Satan, spoiled principalities and powers, made a show of them openly, like when conquering armies won a battle over the enemy, they would parade all their goods to the streets of the city. All oh, the kids, everybody, whoa, those guys was intimidating at us. Now they're jeering at them. You know, they're probably walking in their loincloth or bibbities and stuff like that, going to the city. Jesus spoiled the, the devil. Took, him of, t took his authority away and gave us the power and authority over him. He's waiting, knowing and seeing as we keep the enemy under our foot. He's the head, we're the body. And more and more people are living in their authority that's been given them. It says, verse 12, Buried with him in bat baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God. Buried with him, identified with Christ, dead with him, raised with him to a place and position of authority. From this position and place, then it comes to habitation, where we dwell. We stay every day worshiping, drawing closer and closer. And every day from the time you get up, praise the Lord. What we got for me, Holy Spirit, today? Yeah. Hey, thinking of him, giving direction, seeing people on the street, 
ministering to this person, hel helping this person, it's like, wow. Every day, God opening up doors. Sometimes in my work, I, from the morning, sitting, hey, my Uber and Instacart is open. Hey, bing, Pier 1. Pier 1, I know what Pier 1 is. People have, are dropping off their cars. Some to San Diego. They're going to move there. Others going to South Carolina, nice places in the States pick them up, go into the airport. Sometimes, last week, hey, a couple of people from the airport, they're going to uh, Kihei Cove, the beach area, get some resorts. They're going to stay there a couple of weeks. <laughs> they're from Australia, living in New York, coming to Maui. Somebody else from California, going to the same area, staying over there. Last Saturday, hey, somebody else from, they were time in Chicago, Idaho, California. Now they're coming to Puamana. So people are coming and going. Coming to Maui. God is leading people to the islands. Also, in my daily walk even, <coughs> like today, I'm delivering, delivering food to mail yard house, some, somebody from Costco. I bring them food, leave them on the back porch, they say. I leave them there. I take a picture. Dropping off the other place, up Wailuku Heights. <coughs> Coming back down. Bing! Hey! Another order from, they want food from uh, Foodland. I go pick up those items. Hey, it's the same house in New Yard. <laughs> <laughs> they, they're making another order. i delivering over there. <laughs> And I never see the person. They only stay in the house, take the picture when I'm gone. <laughs> they, they get their food like that. And all over, th these people are just using the services and everything like that because, and come to think of it, you, you young people don't know. When I was your age, <coughs> outside on our porch, we had on big black phone like this, hard like this in plastic. The rotary dial, you got to dial like this, you know. <laughs> Two, four, 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 and then sometimes you, you learn and you see some people they go they go like this they hold their finger inside they come back and they go again <laughs> instead of take it out like that but you dial your numbers like that and then if you cannot afford the private line you're only your one family you get the neighbors hey like the Presbyterians and the Kaurahas hey they still on the same line hey get off the phone I like talk to. <laughs> <laughs> Party line. That's the old style. <laughs> but later on, I was in northern Thailand eh, and then started cell phones. So not everybody had fixed lines in Thailand. So slowly we got the uh, phones in, <coughs> in Thailand. Eh, I can call my pastor friend Morris. Come over the border. Go to KFC. We'll have lunch. I can give you some money, you know. And then that was the extent of our basic phones. Today, <laughs> when I get up and get ready for, get on these lines, it's like you hit <coughs> the, the, the numbers for, let's say, Instacart. You got to answer all these questions. You have COVID? You feel fever? This and that? Yes and no? No, no, no. Okay. Confirm this. You can get on. The other one, <laughs> Uber. You have COVID? Yes or no? This and that. that, that okay. Take a picture with your mask on. <laughs> <laughs> Selfie. And so sometimes I play around. I put my mask over my face. <laughs> see if the thing going to catch. Hey. Then they said, no. You got to verify again. <laughs> Amazing. This kind of things like that. So just the technology. But they say in heaven, a lady <coughs> was there from Arizona that th the people came up to her and touched her to pray and bless her. So you walk in more love. Walk in more love when you go back to her. Be more kind to the people. And then they touch her, but they don't speak. They just impart spirit to spirit, you know. 
And that's probably a, your your family like that. I bet if your dad prayed for you and just he doesn't have to, you will know, you know, you can feel the anointing, you can kind of like sense what that love prayer and things like that is, you know. So more than the best of communication today is like heart to heart, Amen. prayer, prayer to prayer, distances. And the power that you have of heaven's anointing when you speak, rise up in Jesus' name. Because Brother Hagen was telling in one situation that he was praying for a young child that had passed away. Praying, praying, praying in the name of Jesus. I will, I will not let this child go. I speak life and everything. <coughs> the child was in heaven speaking to Jesus. Oh, and the child was so happy being with Jesus. And Jesus says, oh, you cannot stay here. You're going to have to go back to earth. And the child said, no, I want to stay here and everything. Jesus pulled back the curtain and showed Brother Hagen <coughs> on his knees praying. And he said, see, he won't let you come up here. You got to go back. <coughs> and then she was already in her body and then back on earth like that. Hallelujah. He was, he saw his sister up in heaven one time. He went to heaven. And the sister said, the people here are concerned about spiritual things. And they know when a family member commits their life to Christ. And so, just the reality of, wow, you know, we get sports, our finances, and different things, and everything, and the big C's coming up there, they're not even concerned, you know. <laughs> they're not even phased. They're just rejoicing, praising, worshiping Jesus, and everything like that. Because, like, they got it on, under control. Yeah. They're just wa waiting for us to walk in our authority and our power and, yeah. and don't be moved because they want to move to what you say. Angels want to, boom, empower you and do the bidding of the words that you speak Amen. for what you need. They're moving with your words full of power and then that's why they want to get it. It's here. Realize, you know, yeah. the fullness of that's available to you yes you can go up there and get the instructions and everything like that but if by faith how much more you get it from here directly or being taught by the pastors who that's key word every time we come in here you know Wednesdays and Sundays everybody's hungry gleaning for that one word something that'll stand and be strong you know and little bit of joke maybe like Randy would share that <laughs> <coughs> I was thinking I was going to bring my uh, onion skin mask onion bag mask just for fun because the pastor said the other Sunday if you cut the onion and you put them in the ice box it can contaminate the other foods so I, if you can contaminate the other foods if I bring the strong bag of the onion <coughs> and I put them over it can resist the COVID. <laughs> so maybe I can bring a joke. Then I was thinking, oh, and then he's talking about the fish and people cannot maybe swim because of the lies of COVID and maybe sharks. So maybe if I bring a fish mask, <laughs> that'll resist that. And then from the fish mask, then everybody will start not wanting to need to wear masks to the point where like the emperor's new clothes where he was naked and the kids said, hey, he's naked. Hey, hey quiet, quiet, quiet. So they're like, hey, they don't have masks. Hey, quiet, that's all right. They can be there. <laughs> so, so just somebody has to break the system. Yeah. Break the thing like that. Oh, because I, I'm in Costco doing stuff. Even if I get my nose blood out before I come in the door, one lady, ho, oh, hey, put your mask on over your nose. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, different things like <laughs> people under their breath too. You know, they speak when you're moving in the aisle. If you mask below, it's like <laughs> different things. It's like oh man, thinking. Sometimes I'm thinking, uh, oh man, thinking old school days. Oh, we could play in a river and. Uh, do things and just drink the water and everything <laughs> all day, play in the different 
Volley Palm, Puno Wai, Yao <laughs> River, different things like that, you know. It's like, oh man, things have changed. <laughs> Coming back to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians. Ephesians 1, a good morning prayer. It says, That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of our glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, the eyes of your heart being illuminated, I added that, that you may know what is the hope of His calling and what the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints, what is the exceeding greatness of His power to us who believe according to the working of His mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. God in his mighty act and power, when Jesus was in the midst of the dogs and the bulls of Bashan in hell, his power, his greatest power that he ever existed, exerted, raised Jesus right above them to the grave and on up which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Verse 6. Oh, we'll read verse 5. Even when we were dead in sins, has he quickened us or made us alive together with Christ? By grace are you saved and has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. Verse 6, And has raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ. We are in Christ, abiding in Christ, dwelling in Christ, and you have a position at the right hand of the Father. And you can use the name of Jesus. And all of heaven backs you through the power of his name. And from that position, you walking out your life here, in your prayer life, in your unity with Christ, in the spirit, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. There's power and anointing. There's Psalm 91 protection. There's the provision of Psalm 23. And then you realize more and more, wow, that's right. He shed his blood. He was marred. He did that for me. He's setting me up on high. And now as you walk this race, he wants you to have his very best. He's raised you up. And then you realize, man, as you're worshiping Jesus, you're growing closer, you're praising Him, you're getting one with Him, fused with Him, united with Him, empowered with Him. It's like, yeah, praise be to God. Lembrando lo broso lo begueva sham brendele bosho pre que le masam brendes tolo man brendele bashanda. Speaking about others, others who went to heaven, there was this lady from Arizona. Of all things, in between services when she was to minister, <laughs> there was pineapple for snacks. She eat the pineapple. The pineapple get in her throat <coughs> and started causing an allergic re reaction. They had to call the AMR ambulance, rush her to the hospital, but she died. Then she went on to heaven. And then some of the key points, it says, the children were at the father's feet. God loves the children. They were at his feet. And he was ministering to them. She said there was rooms 
that she went into like a music room and she could sing and praise and worship she went into another room and they were dancing and dancing artistically and everything she was dancing with them there was another room there was painting and everything like that it says wow all these creative abilities sometimes we limit ourselves we think i don't know if i can do that i'm not talented but when you're in christ and he releases those things things happen this other man kevin zadai was saying that he couldn't play instruments but after he saw heaven and then he came back to earth he went to a Kenny G concert, sat on the front w row, watched him play his instrument, the sax. Then he went in his own room, closed the lights, worshiping the Lord. He could start playing. He could play the guitar, the keyboard, many different instruments. And he made uh, <coughs> an easy, lis easy listening tape of all his he playing all the individual instruments and put it out there he also started going online teaching ministering having schools all over thousands of students watching online and he bought like 11 cameras he said because in the years to come if anything breaks down and there's there's a breakdown in supply chains and everything, he's got 11 cameras <laughs> to back up his <laughs> his programs and everything like that. And just the different things. He bought a expensive violin for some other pastor's daughter. And just God moving, moving, moving. And just the inspiration that they receive, you know, when you Jesus. And he said, what would you do if you couldn't fail? Because when all of heaven backs you and everything you cannot fail you can succeed in life Amen. another lady from Missouri on Daystar she said she met her family at the gate they were all the family and a little young kid and they said ah but you cannot come in because you, you're not going to stay here and they said who's that little kid they said oh that was your little kid that was born premature but they're, they're here taking care of with the family and then God showed her that she went to the edge of a big, vast pit and the stench of hell <coughs> came rising up and it was so bad. It's like, wow. She re realized, you know, to warn others that they don't want to go to hell and all, all of that. She saw beautiful flowers all over flowers. Jesse Duplantis said the flowers followed him as he walked by. <laughs> they could move, you know. They, they all worshiping God like that. So there's glorious things. There's you know, a whole much more like that. But God just wants us in our daily walk to believe him. Keep living as we're living. And... As our music team keep encouraging us, get closer. The words coming out in the screens that God inhabits the praises of His people. He He's right there with us. We can have the mindset of history makers, because whatever you begin doing, change the course of history, change the course of what's happening in the li islands even this time, because you're standing in faith, Amen. crying out fighting with the brethren, fighting for the brethren. You're developing your close communion, intimate fellowship with Jesus. He's given you revelation from his word, a visitation, and you're making the effort to habit, habitate, getting God's habitation more and more in your homes, in your car, in different places, just that extra few minutes. Lord, I worship you. I thank you, Lord, that you desire my very best, that you love me so much. And then he's just exploding that in your heart, you know. And it's not 
not so difficult now. It's not such a great distance. It's like He's living in you, abiding, dwelling, and, and providing and ministering for you. Sometimes we don't realize our value, but we are the currency of heaven. When they have streets of gold, sapphire, thrown areas where it's so hot and powerful and everything, they don't need the gold, silver, trading goods that we need. You are the currency. You are the most important thing for the people there. They're all watching us. Come on, run our race. Do what you can for the master here on earth. Tell the people. It's like, don't be distracted with all the BS in the world. <laughs> stay, stay with the Lord, the things that he has for you, and declare what you speak to your friends, encourage to your friends. <laughs> That's powerful, creative word to their, and they're all cheering you on in heaven. My relationship with my father is my ministry. From this relationship springs forth my service to others. Our faith-filled words begin to create substance, abundant provision for upcoming vision. Our faith faileth not. I know he will provide for his harvest of precious souls. You're on the master's business. There's a lot of work still. Things will open up. There need churches to be planted in nation. <laughs> Five months cycling in Japan, walking. They need churches. They need people. They need ministry. Vietnam, Laos, some of these landlocked places. Man, they need help. They're lost. Lost is a bat in this COVID situation and the government lying to them and keeping them pinned down and everything. Your prayers change things and just whatever you're doing in your own life, your families, it's like yeah, you got the victory. Amen. You guys are on the road to success. Amen. And you got the greater one in you. <laughs> amen. Amen. Time to close and If anyone here or online has not received our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we'll lead you in a prayer. You can say this, Heavenly Father, I ask you to forgive me on my sins. I believe that Jesus died for my sins, rose from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And Father, I just... Thank you for accepting me and making me your child. And I rejoice. My name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life in Heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. And fire. As you choose to plant seeds, support this ministry as it has its 24 outreaches into the world and here on the islands. You can click on wordoftruthmaui.org, hit that green button, plant a seed, communicate with the ministry. We'd love to hear from you. And we just thank you in Jesus' name. Be blessed.